This is a continuation of the modelling a mouse with lips. <laughs> Animated character tutorial that can be applied to Show some professionalism, please! Take two. This is a continuation of the modelling a mouse with lips for our animated character tutorial, but can be applied to any character we want to add teeth, eyes or eyelashes to. I'm going to show how to create the teeth by starting in a new file. We'll import them into our character later. Create a new file by opening Seamless 3D and set the grid scale field to 0.01, so that our grid shows 1cm squares. Tick the XY plane field set to front view and zoom in and position to these two squares left of the grid center. Click the NURBS lathe button and click one square from the center to establish the position of our lathe spindle. Click the arrow down point so that our spindle is pointing down. Add five points progressing in the direction of the spindle and one more point to end the lathe. Tick the end SP field to close the end of the lathe. Untick the Add Point Enabled field so that we can adjust the lathe's control points without accidentally adding or inserting any new points. Click Convert to Patches, set staves to 8 and then click Done. From a worm's eye view, drag these points in a bit and then select the whole tooth and squash it thinner. Squash the two last rings to sharpen the ends of the teeth. Select one of the teeth and drag it to its mirror twin. From a worm's eye view, drag the pivot point to the centre and rotate the teeth a little. With one of the teeth selected, click the duplicate selected patches button, position and rotate. Scale the selected tooth so that it's smaller than the two centre teeth. For Lucy, I only want this ring for the top two centre teeth, so this ring can be deleted. We can keep duplicating two teeth at a time to add more teeth, but I only need four teeth for my character at this stage. More teeth can be duplicated later in the characters file after they've been imported. This isn't important, but I want to rename the part in the scene tree window to something more meaningful than part one. Let's call it teeth. By having the teeth's part named different to pelvis, the teeth polygons will be imported to a separate part to the pelvis, where all the other polygons are by default. This will give us some more options to render the teeth differently, like making them more shiny. The teeth will still be controlled by the head bone when animated, so this won't affect our character's movements. If we group the teeth patches while the scene tree window is open, we can see how all the patches are put into a single group node. If we think of group nodes as folders and patches as files, this is like putting files from different folders into a single folder. Save the file as teeth and then close Seamless. Open our character in a new instance of Seamless. We want to be in modeling mode to import anything to our character. If we make the mistake of importing while in scene edit mode, our teeth will be imported as a model reference, which would mean our teeth would be in a separate model to our character and therefore our character would not be able to own them for animation. Clicking a control point in the center of the lips before importing will set the position of the imported patches close to where we want them. To import, select Import Selected Patches from the File menu, select the Teeth file and click Open. Scale and position until the teeth are in a fitting size and position for the mouth. We can further change the shape, size and position of individual teeth if desired. We can see all of a tooth's cage, even if the tooth is partially hidden by the mouth, by toggling out of Z-Buffer Control Cage mode. If we want to work on them in full view, select them and click the piggy. Click the piggy again to toggle back out. Save and close down Seamless. Create a new file by opening Seamless and set the grid scale field to 0.1 so that our grid shows 10 cm squares. Tick the Show Subsquares field. Click Bird's Eye and zoom in. Click the sphere and then click a subsquare away from the center of the grid and set the eyes to about this size. Click the butterfly to convert the spheres to patches and then click Done. Open the control panel and then plug in a stem node. Set both staves and bands to 24 to increase the polygon density. 
Because at least half of the eyeballs will be hidden by the head, we can optimize the polygons by only generating polygons for half of the patches, by setting Y distance to 0.5. Untick the End SP field so that our polygons don't end with a single point. From a side view, we can see the eyes need to be rotated 90 degrees. If you want to rotate them exactly 90 degrees, tick the grid snap lever field. Because we'll snap the lever with a side view, tick the YZ plane field. Drag the lever around to about 90 degrees and let it snap. Open the control panel and plug in a color sweep. Click a black tab to set the center of the eye to black. With a side view, click about halfway in the eye's curve to insert a color point and click a white tab to set the color point white. Insert another color point to end the pupil and set it black. Begin the iris by inserting a point close to the end pupil point and set it to this nice light blue. Insert a color point close to this white point and set it to this darker blue color. Insert our final color point between these two blue points and set it to the same light blue color the iris begins with. To make our eyes look more natural, we can lighten the darker blue by selecting a blend between these two blue colors. This can be done by creating a color strip in the palette window. Before creating the color strip, select the iris's most outer color point. To create the color strip, with a light blue color selected in the palette window, Right-click this tab and from the menu, select Set this color tab. Click the darker color tab. Right-click on this tab below the tab we just changed and select Set this color tab. Now we can select the blend of blue we want for the selected color sweep point by clicking on the color strip we just made. Name the part node eyes. Group the patches. Save the file as eyes and close down Seamless. Open our character in a new instance of Seamless and delete the eyes. Set the position for the patches to be imported by clicking on a midpoint between the eyes and then import the eyes. We only want one of the eyes selected to avoid confusion when scaling and positioning them. I want the eyes a little closer than the button eyes were to make it easier to fit them inside the head with them looking forward. It makes it easier to adjust the eye sockets if we show only the cage for an eye socket patch, which can be done using the bunny in the brown hat. To have more control over shaping the area around the eyes, I want to insert two additional rings into this eye socket, bringing the total number of rings to five. The innermost ring is mostly hidden by the eyeball, while the second outermost ring allows us to define the eyelids. Our eyeliner is thicker as a result of inserting the extra rings, so we may want to adjust the eye socket color sweeps. After editing the color sweeps, press Ctrl J to join the eye socket vertices back to the head. Before adding glints to our eyes in paint mode, I'm going to insert one last ring into the eyebrows so that we have six rings, same as Lucy has for her eyebrows. Now let's go into paint mode to add some shine to our eyes. If the polygons for our eyes are contained in a separate part, we won't see our paintbrush affect anything until we select the eyes part. So we may need to select the part first, which can be done by directly clicking the part we want to paint using the part picker. There is no need to tick the patch field in combination with the eyeball cages showing in modeling mode, like I show in the Creator 3D mouse eye sockets and coloring the eyes tutorial. If only the eyeball polygons are contained in the eyes part, 
We can't accidentally paint anything else with our brush, so this makes showing only the cages we want to paint obsolete with this method. I used to typically find the results disappointing if I used any colours other than dark colours like dark brown or black for the irises, but after learning to blend in some black for a portion of the irises, I can now reliably love a greater range of colours. This technique also works for other lighter colours like green, light grey or hazel. Create a new file for the eyelashes by opening Seamless and set the scale in the grid's control panel to 0.03. With a bird's eye view, zoom in on the lower left centre square. Tick the Show Subsquares field and set Subsquares to 3. Click the Bendy Cylinder button and click four times to add four control points for the cylinder. Untick the Add Points Enabled field to prevent us from accidentally adding or inserting any more control points and tick the End SP field so that the eyelash has a pointy end. Open the palette and colour the eyelashes black by clicking on a black tab. Change the background to white so that we can see the lashes. Curve the eyelashes from a side view and a bird's eye view. Name the part in the scene tree window, Eyelashes. Save the file as eyelashes and close down Seamless. Open our character in a new instance of Seamless. Click on a mid control point between the eyes to set the position for the imported patches, then import the eyelashes. Being in click to show cage mode greatly assists editing the lashes. We want to be out of Z buffer cage mode so we can see all the control points in any lash we're working on. Duplicate and drag to the other side of the eye. Duplicate and drag to midway. Duplicate two more times so that we have five lashes for the upper eyelid. You can of course duplicate to any number of lashes you want. Clicking with the shift key held down unselects all selected points, allowing us to click and drag one point at a time. I want the outer lashes to be longer and to curve more to the side. After curving the lashes, I want to adjust the locations for some of the lashes. To do this, it makes it easier to hide all the cages which can be done by clicking the black hat or pressing Z. With all the cages hidden, we only need to click on a lash and drag on one of its control points to move the entire lash. Oops, I missed a lash and hit an eye socket. No worries. Just press Z to hide all the cages again. Now let's duplicate all five lashes for the lower eyelid by selecting all the upper lashes with the rectangle selection tool and clicking duplicate. Drag them down and then scale them smaller using the lever tool. Open the transform control panel by clicking this button and set the Y component in the scale field to minus one. This inverts our selected lashes, causing them to point downwards. This is a trick just to save time shaping them all. When you're happy with how the lashes look, convert them all to patches. It's not necessary to press the Done button. Pressing Done will only close the control panel, which will only make more work. To convert each lash, we only need to click on a lash, and then click on the butterfly. Group the lashes by selecting them all, click Group, and then click Done. Before we see our character animate again, we must apply ownership to all the new points in the head. I've been developing Seamless 3D since the beginning of this century. It has evolved with my artistic needs and goals. If you want to support free open source Seamless 3D, please comment, like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but you'll help bring awareness to the software.